Welcome back to Box Delights. It's a cold and wet evening here today, so it's a perfect opportunity to show you some advanced Stratomatic baseball. We're at home in Kansas City. Visitors are Chicago. We've completed the first inning and we're at the top of the second. And what I'd like to do now is switch to the advanced game. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to learn the basic game, go back and look at the previous episode. James Shields is on the mound for Kansas City. And we're going to flip him over to this side. All right. Now, this spot on the board is great for the basic game. But for the advanced game, we're going to just place the pitcher a little closer at hand. Switch to the Chicago scoreboard. That bat is Alexei Ramirez. And again, we're going to switch to the advanced side of all our batter cards. The significant thing here is the lefty-righty matchup, okay, and that's a big part of baseball. Whether the, the pitcher throws left or right-handed will impact the hitter's visibility of the pitch and being able to read the pitch and get a good read on whether it's fast, slow, coming down the inside or the outside of the plate, that kind of stuff. So each hitter also has a left and right. Typically when the pitcher and the batter share the same handedness then the pitcher typically has the advantage. In this example James Shields throws right. Alexei Ramirez we look here on the hitter's card hits right. Okay. These numbers here 25 percent against left-handed pitchers 75 percent against right they just reflect how often in the season we're playing, this is 2014, that hitter faced a left-handed or right-handed pitcher. They have no effect whatsoever on gameplay. These power ratings do. Now, a hitter can be weak against a lefty or normal against a lefty, and likewise for a right-handed pitcher. Okay, so Alexei Ramirez, he's got normal hitting against left and right. He's not particularly weak against either. You see these same percentages here. Again, it's just how many batters they faced in that season. No effect on gameplay at all. Since both players are right-handed, we're going to be looking at the red text. If the hitter was left-handed, then James Shields would use this section. If the pitcher was left-handed, then Alexei Ramirez would use this section. All right. Let's roll the dice and see how this plays out. We're going to play exactly the same as previously. So we roll the white die for the pitch. It's a six, which means we're playing off the pitcher's card. And we're facing a right-hander, so it's the red section. And then for the hit, we get a six. So we can see we've got a split decision here. It's uh, a 1 or 2 is a triple, a 3 to a 20, a double. Let's roll for Alexi. He's got a good hit. It's a 3, or oh, so close. It's a double. That's a great lead off for Chicago. Let's mark it up on his school, school card. So that's two bases. And Gillespie's coming in to bat. Now, Gillespie is a lefty. Now, what you'll find is, as we head towards the latter end of the game, as we head towards the ninth inning, the manager in a traditional game will start thinking about this lefty-righty matchup. Um, with a left-handed hitter coming in, might afford to go to his bullpen. These are our relief pitchers. Switch out a right-handed pitcher and bring in a left-handed pitcher to face a left-handed hitter. Right, but once the pitcher's left the game, they can't come back. So there's a lot of strategy around changing your pitchers as you get towards the end of the game. Now, there are rules for pitcher endurance. Normally, a pitcher is going to go somewhere between 90 and 100. is, is a is a long stretch of, of pitching. Uh, what I like to do as a basic introduction to using 
the pitch endurance after the uh, after the the name here starter where it says he's a pitcher building three he's a starting pitcher there's a number in bracket seven what that means is when we head into the seventh inning James Shields will become vulnerable to fatigue I'll introduce that to you a little bit later on in the game when we look at fatigue later on what you'll see is this this dot here shows seven innings fatigued the strikeout will become a single a single star star but for now one recommendation and this is where I play with my son is we don't use vulnerable to fatigue what we say is that James Shields can pitch a maximum of seven innings so it's a little house rule and then once we hit the seventh inning if we want to bring in a reliever like here Jason Fraser He's got a uh, relief one. We can we say, and this is our how again house rule. Fraser can pitch for one inning. All right, he's Chicago as it goes. Now, one thing you'll discover about Stratomatic is that there's a whole wealth of rules available to you. Which rules you choose is kind of up to you. So a lot of players will kind of mix in basic, advanced, and super advanced rules to suit how they want to play. All right, that's how we play. But I'm going to show you how to play proper pitcher endurance according to the rule book. The other thing about pitcher endurance is you might say, well, why don't I just put my best starting pitcher in and let him pitch all the time you can do <laughs> if you're playing one game. But like in cricket where you have a, a test match series of five games, in baseball you kind of do the same thing. When the guys are on the road or at home, normally you'll have a series of two, three or four games in the trot against the same opponent. So when you're playing this, think about... Um, playing a series of games and what that means is when you use a pitcher for a game he's got to take a rest okay he's got to rest for three or four games between starts if the guy has an asterisk then he can be a um, he can rest for three games three games instead of four now if we look at James Shields he's one of those pitchers who does only need three games he has an asterisk but there's no asterisk here on his card instead you have to look at the roster sheet which is a separate piece of paper that comes with the base game. Now if you're ordering um, individual decks of cards then you can always print these off. They are available from the stressmagic.com. You can find roster sheets for all seasons. So if we look at uh, James Shields on here, this is the 2014 roster, Kansas City, he has a, an asterisk and that means he only needs three rests between games, all these other pitchers, they need four Four, game, four rests, four games when they're not pitching. Now then, let's roll those dice. Um, so Shields against Gillespie. Keep the infield back for now. We'll just keep it simple. So the pitch comes in. It's a two. So it's off the hitter's card. It looks like we're going to have an out. It's a seven. Yeah, that's not going to be good. It's a fly to central field. B question mark. This one plays pretty much the same as the basic rules. All right, so we go to our, our basic strategy chart. Now there's going to be an advanced strategy chart for hit and run, sacrifice, squeeze plays. Okay, but in terms of ground balls and fly balls and stealing, you're going to continue to use the basic chart. All right, so fly ball B, it tells us that the batter's out on the fly out and the runner on third scores are the runner's hold. What about that question mark? Well, the question mark says, instead of the runner on third automatically scoring, like in the basic game, you have to roll a die and check their running rating. Okay, so you, the manager can choose to hold him on third or ask him to try and run in and score. Obviously that only counts when we're less than two outs. As it stands, Conor Gillespie's out on a fly ball to centre field. So we'll mark that up. So that's a fly to centre field. Centre field is number eight and that's the first out. No, it's not. It's a right-handed pitcher. Sorry, wrong column. It's a 2-7 is a strikeout. Next up is Kaneko. 
Oh, DH. Let's roll the pitch. It's a one. It's off Kaneko's card. This could be good for him. Um, against the right-hander, so we're looking red. It's a ten. It's a ground ball to the second placeman. A C. Underline. We can ignore the underline. The underline is only used if we're playing against like legacy teams, old teams. Um, these guys didn't have uh, ground ball C on a batter's card. So uh, if you're playing against an old pitcher, turn that into a ground ball A. And, and a ground ball A underline would become a ground ball C. You kind of reverse them. Okay, so as it stands, we've got a ground ball to second baseman. So it's back to our basic strategy chart. Ground ball C, batters out at first, and runners advance one base. So, Kanoko hits the ground ball to the second baseman, running up the line, ball's thrown over, first baseman catches it, he's out. At the same time, Ramirez here has advanced to third. Not a bad result. We'll put another seven here to show that he advanced to third off batter number seven and he's on the ground out to second baseman. So it's a four and the second out. Flowers is up. He's a righty. So let's just roll. It's uh, five. Could be more interesting if it wasn't the second out, but it looks like that's going to be the end of the evening. innings. Let's see. We've got a seven. So yeah, that's a ground ball to the second baseman, X. Okay, let's see how we do. Second baseman is... Infante, he has a fielding rating of three, so he's not a particularly, particularly good second baseman. And this time we've got the advanced fielding chart. Okay, so we're looking for the second baseman three. We're going to roll the split die, and it's a two. Oh, that's a bad piece of fielding. Even for yeah, for a rated one second baseman, it would have been all right. Even for a rated two, it's not good. For a rated three, it's a single star star. Remember, the star star means the base runners automatically get two bases, one for each star. Okay. What's interesting here is that if I'd have rolled somewhere between uh, eight and twelve, right? It says roll dice on dice on splits eight to twelve. What you do in this instance is you roll an error. An error is when the hitter or runner advances, or make a hitter, um, as a result of the fielder taking, make, making an error. So what you do is you look at the fielder. So this was uh, second baseman, all right? So let's assume we'd rolled somewhere between um, eight, and, eight and twelve. We look at Omar Infante. He's our second baseman. And right next to his fielding rating, so his second baseman rated three, remember that's the column we used, it says E14. And what that means is we look at the E14 box out of all these boxes here. This means we have to roll the six sided dice in all three of them, okay? Oh dear, we've got a two and a four. Not good. We're E14, remember? So we look at the red dice results, the coloured dice results, it's a 2, so we get the 2 range. Okay, if we had say a 5 and a 1, that's 6, then we'd be up here, 6 to 8, it would be a grand ball A. As it goes, we're in the 2 range. Now, with the 2 range, there's multiple readings, there's E1, there's 1 GBA, 2 to 6. And this is where the white die comes in. What this tells us is, if the white die is a number one, then we get the E1 result. An error has occurred at the base. On a two to six, which is what we got four, it's a ground ball A. 
So we managed to escape with uh, Gramble A. So a lot going on. You've really got to make sure you've got the best field. <laughs> All right. As it goes, we were lucky. We got a single, and lead runner has scored on that single. So let's chalk it up. We've scored off number eight, Tide of Flowers. Shade that one in. It's nice and dark then, so you can see that that's a run scored. And this counts as a single, not an error for Flowers. We're at the bottom of the order now. Danks, Jordan Danks, he's a lefty. So we still stand a chance of getting someone on. We've got a man on. Let's roll him, let's see what happens. Okay, it's a four off a left handed hitter, so it's James Shields, and we're in the blue this time. This could be good. We've got a couple of uh, nice results here, particularly a six. It's always good when the bottom of the order gets off the pitcher's card. It's a ten, and it says catch X. We know Salvi is a good, Salvi Perez is a good catcher for the Kansas City Royals. He's rated one. So again, it's back to the fielder's chart, the advanced fielding chart for the catcher's card. Uh, splits are going to be 9 to 12. He's a catcher rating one. So let's roll our D20. It's a one, but <laughs> that's terrible. It's no problem for Salvi. It says pass ball and foul out. Now this one's a bit trickier to get the rule down, but a foul out means that the ball's gone past the hitter, it's come off their bat, and the catcher's caught it. Okay? The hitter's out. But there's also a chance, particularly because I think because this is kind of a, um, you know, a difficult pitch for the catcher to deal with, the pass ball means that the catcher is going to completely miss the ball. It's going to fly off, hit the netting behind the batter, behind the catcher, and that means that might actually turn into a single. So what we've got to do is we've got to check the catcher's rating once more. Let's look at Salvi's card. Now next to his catcher fielding rating of 1, and there's an E rating, there's a T rating, there's also a pass ball rating. And for Salvi it's really good, it's a 1. He's a pretty good catcher. What well, that means we have to roll the D20, anything higher than this rating, and it will be a foul out. So let's roll it once more. Anything higher than a 1 please? Yeah, a 20, no problem at all. So that's the final out of the innings. Um, even if there was a pass ball, what it means is if I rolled a 1, so it's le equal to or less than the catcher's pass ball rating, our well, base runners will advance, but this guy's still going to get out, okay, because it said pass ball and foul out. So let's just chalk it up. It's uh, foul out to the catcher, number 2, and that's the third out of the innings. Next time. Next time, we'll look at some more of the advanced rules. So we'll look at stealing, cutting off runners, that kind of stuff. Join me next time.